Italy says it's seeking a way out of China's sprawling Belt and Road initiative. Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney's government says joining the infrastructure programme four years ago under a previous government had done little to boost Italian exports, while Chinese exports to Italy had soared. Rome is the only major Western power to join Belt and Road. Critics say it's a tool for China to spread its geopolitical and economic influence. Well, for more on this, let's bring in China analyst Fraser Howie. Great to have you on the programme, Fraser. Just tell us, the Italian government says that China's the only winner out of Belt and Road. Is it right when it says that? Uh, well, let's put it this way. Um, if there are two winners, they're not equal winners, let's put it that way. As they point out, the Chinese exports to Italy have certainly increased. Italy does not feel it's got the economic benefits. And, of course, one of the things that Beijing touts when it promotes its Belt and Road, or what's really better called globalisation with Chinese characteristics, is that it's an equal partnership and it's win-win. And the reality is that's just not how it plays out. So how is it actually playing out for the countries involved and for Beijing? Is it going the way that... It was planned, because I think the idea was that Beijing would be investing in countries that perhaps other countries wouldn't invest in. How are those countries managing with that arrangement? Are they still managing to service their debts, for example? Sure. OK, so, of course, the Belt and Road is many things to many people. And China has been investing in many sort of developing countries, the global south, for many, many years over various sorts of programs. And under Xi Jinping, it came on, all these things came together as Belt and Road. And the idea was very simply that Beijing was trying to follow its model, which it had used successfully domestically, of build it and they will come through trade and investment. And they said, you know, we will extend this to all sorts of other countries and that by building that infrastructure, they will benefit, we will benefit, because it will tie the, those countries into our global trading patterns. But also importantly, it was ultimately Chinese companies that were going to be building much of that infrastructure. So China was effectively exporting its surplus uh, capacity and infrastructure overseas. And the reality is that it has not played out, Beige, uh, or certainly not played out the way it wanted. Yes, there have been many uh, bridges built, ports built, roads built, etc., that's come at a very high cost. Um, and many of these countries are now finding they can't service their debt. Not only that, is there been problems of taking on more debt, Beijing has written many of these clauses and agreements in such a way that they got preferential treatment if the country started to suffer. And so that now when countries are struggling, just as interest rates grow up globally, growth has fallen, COVID impacts, etc., um, other lenders to those countries are unwilling or unable, frankly, to deal with those countries because there's all this hidden debt to China, which the country, those countries don't want to talk about. So it's become a bit of a, a bit of a zookeeper's bucket, as it were. A lot of mixed things in there, which simply aren't going as well as they hoped. So perhaps Italy is not the only country that's regretting getting involved with Belt and Road. But let's talk about Italy. So the only major European country to get involved with Belt and Road. But a lot of people will be asking why Italy got involved in the first place. Uh, yes, indeed. I think, you know, if you go back a few years, four years when they signed up, um, a lot of people would be scratching their heads. Is this a, a fracturing of EU policy? Um, if there is, really is even a EU policy towards China. But again, this was a major European power uh, getting uh, signing up, first one ever. Um, and it was done for short-term political advantageous reasons. The government at the time felt that this was a way to sort of, uh, you know, uh, curry favour with, uh, with China, get some sort of easy investment, and also to, you know, to basically turn their back on Brussels, who felt they were ignoring them. Um, but ultimately, that's not how it works out. China is, there's many cases where the development has not come. As I say, the rewards have not been equally shared. Um, and we've also seen China just treating other European countries badly. You can look at the case of uh, Lithuania, um, and when Lithuania pushed back against China's restrictions on Taiwan, etc. And so the new government in Italy is saying, look, this is a very unequal treaty, and we're simply not going to go along with it. And it says it wants to pull out of Belt and Road without harming relations with Beijing. Is that even possible? Well... 
you know, Beijing will will, will get all upset and, and claim this is a great insult to 1.4 billion Chinese, etc. This is classic Communist Party so speak to whenever it gets upset and things don't go their way. But ultimately, there's very little that Beijing can do. Um, Italy is an important member of the European Union. Um, Italy is a very popular draw for Chinese tourists. You know, Chinese uh, tourists and consumers at home buy a lot of Italian goods. So it's not as if it, Italy is not insignificant to China at all. Um, and I think ultimately, if, China, if, it, if Italy doesn't want to go ahead with these projects, it simply doesn't go along with them. The Chinese can't force themselves. They're not invading Italy so they can build roads and bridges. OK, Fraser Howie, China analyst. It's always very interesting to hear what you have to say. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks very much.